I, I think the biggest thing is effort. Our kids played extremely hard. Uh, something that we talked about going into the football game and, and uh, for four quarters, our, our guys forgot about the previous play and just continued to play and, and play really hard. I, I thought uh, the energy and emotion that they brought to the game was critical and, and uh, was a big part of us finishing the game the way that we wanted to. I did, um, you know, I had a couple of protection busts um, that uh, that we can clean up. Um, and tight ends and running backs are included that is in, in that as well. Uh, I thought they were physical, uh, communicated pretty well for most of the day. Uh, with all the changing parts that we had had during training camp and moving guys around, uh, I was really pretty pleased with what they did up front. Um, played with great great effort too. So like uh, like the direction that that group's had. Yeah, smart, competitive, um, the ability to, to move around like you, you said and, and really uh, be in the flow of the game immediately when he changes over to that position. Uh, his versatility, we've talked about it you know, during the course of training camp, uh, is critical for us and, and being able to rotate guys and, and keep us relatively fresh up there too so that we can play as hard as we need to. And uh, I thought you know, Sam's performance was, was really, uh, really good uh, as long as the other, along with the other guys. Uh, some of those things happen. Uh, protection, getting up and out and scrambling and making plays. Uh, I thought our wide receivers did a great job on scramble drill, working their rules, um, and making competitive plays. Marlon on, on the, uh, you know, between the numbers and, and sideline, uh, with a huge grab uh, when we're backed up inside of a 15-yard line. Uh, Dylan's feet is uh, a weapon for us, and, and uh, part of that's in design quarterback run. Some of that's reading. Uh, maybe a pressure off of the edge. Uh, some of it's uh, in the pocket when it breaks down and something's not there going and making a play. I think you know, from where he started a year ago, his comfort level and, and understanding just how to play the game and when it's the right time, uh, those are all things that, that take time. But he finished the season that way, and, and he, uh, he started week one um, you know, further ahead than, than he had ended the last season. I do. I, I think, you know, our, our freshmen that maybe redshirted a year ago or had an opportunity to play in four ball games. Uh, I think their growth and comfort and understanding of what we're doing, they're completely different players than they were a year ago. Really uh, look at those guys as, as seasoned players. Uh, the freshmen that are getting an opportunity to play right now, some of those guys, you know, Corey was a mid-year guy, hasn't acted like a freshman um, or played like a freshman since he got here. Uh, the true freshman that got here in June, uh, Josh Salazar, those guys, I think, benefited from uh, the, the COVID rules uh, where we were able to start getting those guys into our, our Zoom meetings and get situated comfortable with what we were doing schematically before they were able, even able to get on campus and, and get their feet on the grass with our football team. Um, and uh, you know, I think that's a, a part of the reason that they're playing the way that they are. Uh, the other reason is they're really mature guys that are fiercely competitive and, and compete every day on the practice field, and, and uh, they've earned the opportunity to play. Uh, smart, the ability to recognize and communicate and get all of our, our double teams, our, our combinations to the right people. Um, and did a great job in pass protection as well. And, and uh, he plays extremely physical. Uh, he's in great shape, has the ability to, to play an entire football game and uh, be ready to play, play some more. Um, he's got a great ceiling ahead of him and, and look you know, for him to continue to develop. Lots of little things that we'll tweak from uh, from a week ago, um, but I think our guys have a great understanding of, of what the week's going to look like, how subtly 
Uh, their day is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you know, today everybody had a test here this, uh, this afternoon. Um, guys were great in the meetings and, and on the field here this morning. But, uh, um, you know, it's unique. Uh, you know, at 930, uh, we had a team meeting on, on Saturday. I let them know that everybody was, uh, had passed the test and, and uh, what was going on on the other side of the field and, and uh, get ready to go play. So it's different, but our guys have gotten comfortable with being uncomfortable and things being different. And, and obviously they handled it and performed really well. Uh, don't uh, him. Uh, we'll have one here later in the week as uh, we continue to figure out more uh, with his situation. Yeah, it certainly can be early in the season uh, as guys, you know, get on. On the playing field for the first time, and, and um, um, you know, a high school kid that's, that's seeing uh, the speed of the game. Uh, I think our guys, um, all your weaknesses, all your vulnerabilities can be shown in those moments. You know, early in the season, and, and guys have an opportunity to see it on tape, not just see somebody else do it, but see themselves in those situations. Um, and the urgency from our football team to continue to improve in all those ways is extremely critical here going into week two. And, and uh, the, you know, offensively, uh, the penalties uh, getting us behind the chains. You want to see those things eliminated, the turnovers that we had. Uh, we can eliminate those things too, and that's all 11 guys. It's not just the guy with the ball in his hands. Um, you know, defensively, some of the coverage things that, uh, that we busted on, uh, we can sure those things up. And, and uh, you know, for us, it's a, it's a process. Find a way to go 1-0 and every week, and the only way you do that is, is go 1-0 and every day, and, and uh, that's been our focus. Thought they did a great job uh, pressing uh, the line of scrimmage and delivering some of those blocks uh, critically to the to the second level. Uh, that's why you open up and, and have some of those holes that uh, that they had. Uh, I thought they ran physical. They, they found a way to be plus one, plus two at the end of most of their runs, and that changes the way the game's played on third down. Instead of being in third and five, you're in third and two. Instead of being in third down, one to two, you're you're in first down and, and on to the next play. So really like what they did. Thought they did a great job in protection as well. Didn't find out until I was talking to, to Mike this morning uh, about the, the rankings. We, we have no control over it. Uh, I've said it since we've been here. I think our kids, uh, for the most part, pay little attention to that and understand that uh, uh, if we go take care of business, um, things will change throughout the course of the season. Um, uh, big win for us last Saturday. Last Saturday has nothing, nothing to do with this Saturday. Uh, and uh, let's get ourselves prepared to go play. That's the public and private Josh Heupel speaking right there. You, you look at East Carolina and, and uh, what they did the second half of last season. Uh, they put up a bunch of points and were in a bunch of tight football games. Uh, it's a prideful group, year two for their, their staff with their players. Um, I don't think our kids are going to take anything lightly. Um, this is a big football game for us. Uh, it's the next one on our schedule. It's the only one that we get a chance to go win this Saturday. You want me to get it from up here? You guys got me now? Uh, just, I, I will. Uh, just look at what East Carolina did the second half of last season. Um, put up a bunch of points, played in a bunch of tight football games, uh, found ways to win some of them. Um, year two for their staff. Uh, they've had a long off season. Uh, I know that they're going to be excited to play this one. Uh, our guys got to uh, surpass that energy and excitement. and, and uh, it's the only one we get an opportunity to play this week. Uh, our kids will be excited and ready and prepare the right way.
talking about Georgia Tech? Yes. I, I, I think they as a program uh, continue to get better. Uh, I said that going into the football game um, in every position group. Uh, in both sides of the football, I, I thought that they had improved from a year ago, and uh, obviously uh, that's why they were able to go down to Tallahassee and get a, a big win. Yeah, a big part of, of why he played the way he did uh, this past Saturday. Uh, when you'd call him, he was working out. Uh, he found a way to go throw and uh, continued to improve. Uh, spent a ton of time uh, with his quarterback coach, uh, Coach Halsley, and, and preparing the right way mentally. And I think that's why there's been such a tremendous growth in just his understanding of all things related to playing the quarterback position here this year. Yeah, for first ball game uh, from them, uh, new defensive coordinator. Uh, so not sure what you're going to get uh, on that side of the football. Um, offensively, a uh, quarterback that played really well down the stretch last year, um, explosive at the at the skill positions, and uh, their first opportunity to play. I know they're going to be excited. I said that earlier. Um, it's you know going to be unique for our players, right? Uh, an empty venue, nobody in the stands. Um, we talked about creating energy and momentum. And sustaining that a week ago, it's going to be critical in this game, too. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.